Hello everybody and welcome to another PMP end of month review. Well, what is this? Well, this is where we sit down and we go through all of the submissions that have been put into the Painters Motivating Painters Facebook group and we review uh, all of them for this month, uh, giving feedback as we can specifically where it's been asked. If you'd like to join us on your hobby journey, well, the link for the PMP, it's right down below and you can certainly find that. You have to answer all of the questions to get in the group. All three questions. Otherwise, you don't get in. This month's theme is units. So we're only going to be looking at units of models, uh, usually for an army, but it might not be. It could be the whole force if we're talking about a skirmish game. And we're going to be breaking down what these people are going for, trying to offer the best advice we can. Remember, as always, to post a nice, simple request for critique. Uh, don't write me a novel. Uh, just what you've got, what you're looking for, and how I can help. That's what we're here for. Remember, uh, the PMP is about being positive and offering positive feedback, critique, and helping you take your next step on your hobby journey. So with that, let's get into the actual review here. Okay, so let me scoot this way a little bit. All right, there we go. So uh, <clears throat> first off, we've got some orcs here <clears throat> from Peter, who says he was going for a couple different types of contrast. So uh, my answer uh, Peter is these are nice. Uh, the older Blood Bowl orcs that they're they're a good tabletop standard. We do still need to continue the contrast journey. Um, one thing I'll say about using green and red contrast is that you have to be careful. You don't want to use the saturated versions of, of of both colors. So one of the things you could do here to push the contrast is actually increase your yellow. So bringing in a, a yellow tone or a yellow mixed with a flesh tone or something like that as a highlight to both the red and to the green. That will bring the two colors together, make them feel as though they're standing within the same light, but it'll also help desaturate both tones and make it so they're not quite as, uh, not quite as clashing, because red and green, if you use the saturated versions of both colors, just end up looking like Christmas. So it does contrast, but not really in a positive way, especially when you're going for rough and tumble football works. The biggest chance I see for opportunity improvement is things like contrast, uh, uh, on the metal, which is quite flat, um, and then things like the leather boots. I can see you pushing the skin. We've got to push it a lot farther as well as integrating contrast of hue through things like maybe some additional colors in the lips or the skin, pinks, things like that. Those also help not only add life through blood beneath the skin, but also help to desaturate the uh, green tone as well. So there you go, Peter, hope that helps. Okay, next up, we've got Josh uh, with it. He says, you know, painted these up to a tabletop. Uh, standard, uh, and he's got hit all of his giants. Well, certainly cool. Uh, love the idea that you get them done. Uh, you know, I, I think the biggest thing I would recommend is to yeah add a little more, um, you know, like again, it's going to be a contrast story. Things like their hair, especially on the skin. These guys are mostly skin, and so there's a lot of space to play there, right? Um, glazing in some soft tones doesn't necessarily take a long time, but adding in when we're talking about skins, we're especially if we're doing with Caucasian skin tones, is what you favored here. Uh, you know, adding in things like soft tones of magentas, purples, crimsons, browns, that kind of stuff. Um, you can even get out the Reichland flesh shade and use it as a controlled glaze as opposed to a wash. Um, and I think that's going to go a long way. Uh, I see you've got some of it on their kneecaps. I like that. Uh, I want to see more of that around things like the pecs and the arms and the elbows and the joints and things like that and the fingers and really, really push those highlights on the face where we've got the most opportunity for uh, increase of contrast is especially around the face. But I think for a, uh, you know, a tabletop army that you got together seemingly from the, your, your, uh, your text pretty fast, I think these came out great. I think they look really nice. So I hope they go uh, smash some people. Well done. Okay, next up, we've got Silas, uh, Living Dead. Just any opinions on the basing color palette or the non-metallic metal? Sure, so with non-metallic on Undead, it's a little tricky because you need to also integrate other colors of rust and weathering. Um, I may do a video on that sometime. I actually don't have anything on specifically doing non-metallic with rust effects, but uh, it's something that you'll want to think about. My guess is Juan Hidalgo is going to have a tutorial on it very soon, given what I just saw him posting online. Um, I think that the spear tip is probably the one that sells me the most. Uh, maybe the guy's sword in the back. Some of them are kind of flat, like the mace in the guy's hand doesn't is just kind of flat gray. Same with a lot of their shields. 
Uh, as far as the skin tone goes, on these guys, I think that's actually what I really like. Uh, I like the skin on the dead guys. That's you know we've integrated some nice green tones. There's still reds around, stuff like that. So that's actually the part that sells me. Uh, overall, nice job. Uh, I think they look real cool. Keep pushing the contrast on the non-metallic metal. Smooth out those blends. When you get to things like shields, you want to make sure you got those edges popped out. And the trick with rusting this kind of non-metallic is that you then take your shadows, and that's where you work the rust in to make it stand as a contrasting element. So instead of just going into the dark part, it's then going to have browns, oranges, things like that worked in in the normal way that you would figure in weathering. Okay. Uh, oh, yes, you had also asked about the basing and the freehand. Uh, I apologize. Um, I think the basing's fine. Um, be careful with just, like, rock elements like this. They look boring when they're just gray. As always, rocks are never gray. Rocks always have color. Browns, purples, reds, everything that occurs in nature. Uh, and then as far as the freehand goes, um, you want to make sure whenever you're doing freehand, you get a nice solid color. I can still see the color underneath. One of the keys to good freehand is a nice, solid, thick base coat. You want it to be applied, applied cleanly, strongly, and show no trace of the color underneath. Because in reality, if you were to, like if this were being enameled on the shield, it would not be showing any of it through. So you would not be doing freehand with acrylics on something of this size. So there you go. Okay, next up, uh, Tebow, um, bad guys from the Witch's Sabbath. Uh, you're basically looking for any feedback. I'll, I'll be honest with you, Tebow. I'm, I'm, these are very strange miniatures and it's really hard to nail it down. Um, like they're all just kind of swoopy loopy things, just piles of things. They don't have a lot of, these kind of figures always drive me crazy because I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at. And that makes it a real challenge to paint because you need to control where my eye is going. And it's really just this chaotic situation. So I'm not blaming you for the sculpt. I think this guy's probably the cleanest one because at least I can kind of tell what's even going on here. Um, a couple of things I would say is you want to think about not using standardized recipes for stuff. What I can see here is, oh, we got to skulls. Okay, we painted them white, and then we applied the wash. And we got to wood. We did the wood color. We, you know, like everything feels very paint by the numbers, and they're not living in it. None of this lives in the same world. Like this stone is completely gray, and then these bones are completely warm, and they look very contrasting and strange sitting next to each other in, a, in an unhelpful way. So like, you know, highlighting these back up, doing them in the same cold uh, gray as the stone would have been a great touch, right? Because then they still could have had some brown shadows. Uh, we could have also worked reds and browns into the shadows of the rock that had, you know, different volumes playing around there. One was still red as rocks, one would have red as skulls, and that would have helped it stand apart. Um, as far as with models like this go, it's really hard to say. I mean, I couldn't even tell you, like, what is this guy's head versus an arm? I don't know what this is. Again, not on you. I just, I really don't like these figs. Um, so it makes it very hard to evaluate. I'll say overall, we need more contrast. It's going to be a common story. You're going to hear me say a hundred times in this video. Um, the wood needs more contrast, the metal, the uh, the skin here, all that. Um, I, what does stand out to me is the verdigris work on the copper. I think that looks really nice. You mixed in a couple different green tones there. You didn't just go for a single one. I really like that. It create You created a nice variance there. I think that really sells me. So I do like that a lot, Tebow. Well done on that. So I uh, hope that helps. All right, uh, Michael, uh, these are the Edo models from the two-player starter Bushido. Uh, wanted Violet to be his faction's main color, but tried to paint each miniature in his or her own scheme. Any feedback on creating a faction identity but keeping individual models distinct from each other? Yeah, sure. So my answer is I think you did that. Uh, I think you nailed it in like exactly the way I would have said. Pick one dominant color and have that show up in every miniature. Uh, so I have no problem with that. Like you're, I think you did it and executed on it in exactly the right way. Like, they all feel like they begin in the same group because they all have this dominant purple item here. Uh, so that that sells me. I'm okay with that. Um, you know, just other feedback, again, probably just the contrast comment. But I quite like the little non, the, the non-metallic execution on, like, this guy's blades. You put the highlight in the middle. Always makes it look good. Uh, I like the snake. So, and, and your purple's very rich. You could probably add a little flesh tone to make that appear more silky. Like, use a, use a, a sunny skin tone or something as a highlight. That's going to make purple feel really silky and uh and like it has a real sheen to it uh so yeah but other than that good stuff i i like what you did here and i think you you've unified them well okay next up necron warriors uh let's actually look at this picture because this is going to be the one that sort of shows it off the best so i was like a fun concept army like this where we've got kind of this you know bright uh two-tone scheme basically right um one thing i think you really want to do when you when you do this kind of thing is 
I think it's cool to, to have this kind of scheme, but you need to make sure the individual elements are still then really strongly picked out. What I mean here is make sure you have strong black lines if you're gonna go for this in between the individual elements of the Necron. So for example, in between his elbow joints here on his hand, all of this stuff in between his fingers and the leg joints, those need to be really solid and black. When you're going for this kind of striking, almost comic book or, or cyberpunk inspired theme, this, this neon scheme, um, you want to make sure you still have some highlights. So like I would pop some of the blue up a little more. It needs to come to a brighter, more kicking highlight to, to stand out against, you know, to have some fight with the pink because right now the pink is just dominating the blue. Um, but at the same time, you also want to make sure that every panel line and everything that gets really dark to make those brights really stand out and show the full weight of their contrast. And then mixing elements from top to bottom. So for example, the where you mix the pink into the blue here on the gun, I think really works, but we need a little more blue up top and a little more pink down at the bottom. Again, we can keep it small. So for example, if we had some pink tufts on the base, if they had bright blue eyes, right? Stuff like that could go a long way because then it kind of mixes it up a little bit. Think of the difference between, it's like yin yang, right? You have to have a little bit of dark in the light and a little bit of light in the dark. And, and that's what keeps everything looking in balance. If it was just the white against the black, it would be a much more boring image. So uh, there you go. Hope that helps, James. Okay, next up, we've got uh, Christian. Uh, super quick paint job for his Indominus Necrons. A lot of Necrons, so I'm happy that I'm going to get to say Necrons and drive everybody insane in this month's review. Uh, happy with how they turned out. He's going for a heavy weathering scheme and so on. How could we push it a little bit further? Yeah, I mean, they look heavily weathered and old and rusted and crusted. One of the ways we could do is try to pop them out a little more with maybe some additional hits of stipple and color. We could do that with both some stippling of black, especially down in the shadows to take control of the light. We could even do a, a, a sort of anti-zenithal or na na nadural, whatever, highlight. Shoot a dark color up from below the miniature. Doesn't matter. Like you could take some Payne's Gray beneath the miniature and create a nice universal shadow. You could also stipple on a little orange here and there around the edges, like think uh, the edges of joints or the edges of their shoulder plates or stuff like that, just to show where things have really heavily rusted. Um, and that will have two, uh, two effects. One, it'll um, make it pop out a little more. It'll create more bright areas of interest, more visual confusion. that will keep your eye moving around the miniature. But it'll also uh, help to just break up the lot of brown, right? The only other place that really jumped out at me was possible, you know, when you're talking about taking things up to another level, would probably be like big blades, like what the Tomb Lord guy here is is carrying stuff like that is always a great opportunity to really punch in some color and have it look cool you know they they may be rusty and crusty but their weapons are still ready to go and go make some paste out of some space marine so stuff like that's a good chance to really you know pop that blade way out it'll become an area of great visual interest and for a tabletop army it can really make the whole thing uh stand out so there you go hope that helps christian Okay, next up, we have um, Powell, who brought us this wonderful warband and was looking about his thoughts on the OSL. Uh, any other tips? Uh, and then, uh, I think he did a, good, a really good job on this warband. I want to say that out of the gate. Um, they look nice. They're very colorful. I like all the little, the little touches of freehand, like the mushroom on the bottle, you know, for his juice. And uh, stuff like the, the uh, images on the cloaks and stuff like that. I think that looks good. But let's get over here to Zarbag because we want to talk about the OSL itself. That was your main area of question. Uh, my answer is yes, I think it works. Uh, I think we might want to have, if you put a little bit of a dark line right in there, kind of right around the inner thing. Um, so there's a little bit of a separation, just a nice thin, not black, just darker line here around the bottom edge of the thing. You also want to thin out the light that's around it. Like there's a little too much of an edge here. Um, where too much light is spilling out in this very hard way. It should just be like the very edge should carry a little bit of light and nothing else. Now, as to the extension of the light, I think it looks really nice. Uh, love the two-tone reflection in his big giant eyeball. I think you crept the blue out really nicely onto the wool uh, hood he's wearing. I really like the way that you we did some cross-stitching for the texture of that. I think it carries out in the mushrooms here really well. I like how you took it down into a nice purple shadow and up on his fingers. Um, one thing you'll do want to think about is also then in incorporating some deeper shadows. So for example, here between his fingers, those shadows should be really, really dark. Okay. Like I'm under a light right now. You see how dark that line gets between my fingers, right? That's what you want to have there, right? 
So, um, but yeah, I think the OSLs, you know, it sells. We just need to increase the shadow part of it. Your lighting is really good. It has a really nice area of effect. This this came out great. You did a wonderful job with it. They're very fun. Um, they have a whole heck of a lot of personality. Great job. Okay, next up, TJ. Uh, Pink Horror's done some homebrew D&D &D demons. Uh, and he says, you know, looking for opinions on how you could done these better. Put a lot of effort into them, so be gentle. Well, sure, absolutely. I'm not going to beat you up, I promise. Um, they look really nice. I, I love the idea of using them for the Descent to Avernus game. Um, fun demons. I, I, well, I don't I don't use miniatures in my D&D &D game, as I've said many times, but that's a great campaign. It's a lot of fun. So I love that you're playing through it. And if you guys use minis, hey, it's D&D &D getting played. That's never a bad thing. Uh, now, on to these guys. Uh, my answer is a little more contrast is really the way to go here. Uh, so how could we punch them up a little bit? Well, we'd take that red and we'd really add some more highlight. Use something like a medium skin tone or a sunny skin tone or something like that and just kind of pop up those ridges, especially around their face in this area, um, here on the tops of the ridges of the thing around their head, very tops of their muscles, that kind of thing. Mix a little bit of that into your into your uh, red you're using, your red-orange, or just put it on there and then do a glaze of the red-orange over top. Both are perfectly fine. Um, like the green, the, the OSL is maybe a little strong in how far it's carrying down things like this guy's arm. You want to be careful with that. Like it's it's carrying down light to here, but then there's no light here. You know, that kind of stuff. You'd be better with a softer glow. Softer glows generally sell better because this is how much light would be. Like the, the light aura just doesn't make sense there given the other light you've painted, right? If I, I keep this near me now just to do this. Here's my, here's me. How much light did that just make? None, because I'm sitting in like an extremely bright room, right? Like it has a very small radius of what it casts because I'm sitting in this bright area and you've painted the highlights on them as though they have a bright light above them. Uh, so you wanna like these guys with their shadows under their arms, you can really see it, the dudes who are up like this. So can it carry out that normal contrast wheel back on the OSL? I think you got a good, a good look there, but overall these guys look really good, man. Like the bases, they look fun. Good use of color, good choices there. Purple tongues really stand out. Excellent choice to draw attention to the face. Well done. Okay, next up, we have Houston, uh, Batch 10, Blade Geist Revenants. How I can improve the overall ghost aesthetic. Sure, absolutely. So let me know, tell you the first thing I noticed about this. The one way you, you can get a really good check on the ghost aesthetic, a couple different options. So first things first is we don't have enough of uh, sort of a color interest here. So you can do it like on the spectral part of them. You went too dark, it feels basically like the cloth. So you got two choices. You could make the white actually start here beneath the cloth. Then you get this real hard contrast, and then you just take it out to a very light glazed version of the color uh, down at the end of it. So you leave the, the spectral part being the nearest part uh, to the, uh, the white part being the nearest part to the actual cloth. The other option is you brighten it way up. You still make it like a blue green, or sorry, a blue white or something near the actual uh, the the cloth part itself. But then you take it into that ghostly white in this nice soft long transition. Do the same thing at the arms, like right whatever you did down on the ghostly parts at the bottom here. You do the same thing up on the arms. So again, working those soft glazes of that kind of spectral color could be any of the sort of you know ghostly colors uh gw offers or it could just be any old you know light green or light blue uh you know glaze because it's going to give that same feeling the other thing i would say is things like their weapons and their chains look really clean and fresh um if they're ghosts you want them to look dead you want them to look a little old so some steps like some weathering some rust some verdigree those kinds of things are going to go a long way to make them feel more like spirits uh that have been condemned rather than just, you know, fresh off the factory line, people who are picking up some really shiny new weapons and wearing brand new spiffy robes. They just got back from the dry cleaners, right? So there you go. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, Joshua. Very simple um, ask here on, uh, basically like he wants to have this sort of jade look here on the helmet. So my answer is, because uh, that's really the main area of the feedback, my answer is you want to stipple in a couple different colors. When you're doing jade, you lay, lay it down like a nice dark jade color. Maybe actually something called jade on the bottle like Vallejo, right? Then we're going to stipple in a couple lighter colors. Mix in some blue-green, do a little stippling, sharp brush, stipple, stipple, stipple. Put a couple things in lines, like don't just stipple dots. Also stipple in little lines or something like that. Bring it across. 
Then go to then mix in a little white to this, repeat the same exercise. Then do some pure white, very minimal exercise. Again, random patterns all the time. Then you're gonna take that original jade, you're gonna glaze back over it, nice and thin. What that's gonna give is that transparent layered effect because all there's gonna be little crisscrossing areas of patterns that you've organically created through the random stippling. And when you lay a glaze or two over that, it's gonna create that effect you're looking for. I actually have an old video on this if you wanna go back and check it out. Boy, did I do it a long time ago, but I think it was called How to Paint Marble, the first one I did on How to Paint Marble. Um, I actually do it as jade using almost the colors I just described. So if you check that out, that, that'll give you some good direction there. Okay, hope that helps, Josh. All right, next up, Michael. Uh, looking for feedback in general. These aren't the highest quality miniatures, but wanted to do a real-time investment. Any general feedback is appreciated. I won't bust you on the basis because you said you're still thinking about that. Yeah, I think these guys look nice. I like that you did a little different color on each of the turtles for their green skin. I think we could push some of the highlights up on any everybody except uh, Raph. Donatello needs to have more shadows, so he goes way too far from one, two, five, right? As usual, one, when I talk about this in contrast of value, uh, one is your brightest color, five is your uh, darkest color, three is your mid-tone in the middle, and so then the other two are half steps. I recently did a video called Understanding Contrast. I would recommend everybody go watch that. Um, if you have questions, because I'm going to say you need more contrast repeatedly in this video a lot, and uh, like go watch that video. That will get you on the right road. Um, one thing that I noticed is that all their, their strappy straps, like all the white straps they had are very boring and flat and white all the way around. They need some tone, some color. They should have some gray shadow to them, right? This is my white shirt. This is white. Look at this color. Look at what color this is under a white light. Does that look white to you, right? This, how about I cover that up? What color is that shirt, right? Okay. The point is, is that like even very bright white things tend to be very susceptible to shadows. So you want to integrate those gray tones, those blue gray tones to create shadows on them. That's actually the part I noticed that jumped out the most. Uh, I didn't mind the, like, I like the contrast on the turtle skin. A lot of their, their actual masks and stuff look fine, but the, uh, the wrappings or whatever, their little ninja wraps, um, felt pretty boring and, and flat. So that was actually the biggest thing that jumped out at me. Uh, hope that helps. And as always turtle power. Okay. Uh, all right. Next up, Alan. Tunits of Dwarves for his fantasy army from the Skull Pass box. Super classic dwarves. Uh, basically, just looking for general feedback. And then, you know, he did some subtle OSL and, and glazes and stuff like that. Yeah, so these guys look good. Um, nice, clean execution. You're, you've got a really steady hand and uh, a confident hand with the paintbrush. I appreciate that. Uh, I think the subtle OSL actually works, by the way. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You, in, like, they're not actually underground, given how you've painted them. Okay? They're just not right now, because they would have no warm tones on them at all. Um, they would have all, like, cold blue light, except for the little ring of light that their candle was creating. So, I'm okay with that. Uh, I think they look nice. I think your biggest opportunity is probably just to continue pushing your contrast in stuff like the, uh, the metals. Um, is where I noticed it the most. If we come back to these guys, you can see in things like their weapons, their axes, which are pretty boring. Um, the gold, which feels like it needs a little more variation. Um, but I do certainly like what you're doing here. Same with like the edges of the shield, things like that. You've got a clean, confident hand. Yeah, I really like how you tackled the hair and the beards. I think those look nice in most cases. A few of them could use a punch more, a little, little bit of a more punch of contrast, especially the brown. The brown ones is where you kind of tended to have it be very flat. Um, but the, the white beards, the red beards, and the blonde beards, I actually think you did a nice job with. So yeah, just punching up the metals, continuing to push that, and I think you'll have a, a, a I think you'll have a real nice, you know, real nice continuing dwarf army on your hands there. But uh, great job, made fantastic use of these uh, these figures. Super classic box set. All right, RS um, wanted to do a stone theme with a storm cast. Uh, tried to go with a sculpture type look. I still try to give the armor a gold look, but make it more aged. Sure. So a little bit of like a concept army. It's hard for me to give feedback on. I think it's fine. I mean, for what you're going for here, it's a concept army. Um, the one thing I would say is like, it, it certainly is fine for having that kind of a concept to it. If you're going to try to sell stone, then put cracks and stippling and stuff like that on it. The stone has, um, stone isn't a uniform piece. Like if you look at statues that sit out there in the wild, like just Google, you know, uh, let's see, like old weathered statue. Okay. Like, see this 
effect. Notice this chipping and pockmarked and stuff like this. Like this is what happens to stone that sits outside, right? It gets this effect. There are cracks, there are pockmarks, there are stuff like that that happens in it, right? And this is the kind of thing you want to uh, you want to integrate into your pieces. These kinds of streaking, these pocks, these stippling. That's how you do that to sell stone effect, right? Um, the green weapons, I'm not too sure about. I know you're going for an energy. It's kind of looks a little too yellow. It's a little too like baby pukish color to really feel like that. Um, you may like if you had picked like a really clean blue energy, I might have been better. It would have a contrasted more strongly against the rest of the miniature um, because then you would have had a, the, uh, a little more of a uh a solid contrast between the two elements you're working in here the two colors you're working in here but it also just would have felt like it was more standout it's the fact that the energy still contains the tone like the energy's true color is probably yellow maybe yellow green and the stone's true color is yellow the gold true color is yellow so like in the end the whole thing is just yellow right um these are all highly desaturated versions of those things but they're all in that part of the 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 wheel right so um that's something to think about but yeah cool cool take overall okay next up uh matus let's say yes uh simple necron warriors uh feel like there's something lacking like they don't pop enough yeah i think these guys look nice man i think you did a good job uh i mean the only things that really stood out to me is they uh like the metals and everything feels applied really cleanly like the highlights on the black uh, I think the metal, the, the silver metal looks pretty nice. The brown, or, sorry, the gold metal looks kind of boring and flat, honestly. Um, I'd love to see that pop up with a little more shine, have a little more colors glazed into the shadow. I think the standout execution here is the green. I think you did a really nice job doing some really careful highlights, really, really keeping that kicking up. Seems like it's bright and glowing, so I think that's good. The other element that jumped out at me right from the beginning was just the bases. The bases are quite boring. They're just gray stone. Again, stone does not exist as gray. That's not how stone looks. Stone exists in nature. Nature makes mud and dirt and growth and organic life. Like, we live on a planet full of organic life. So even though these guys aren't organic life and probably might live on a very dead planet, still having other colors worked in there, it could be rusts and oxides. You know, you don't even need necessarily that many living things. Just a couple other tones to make that more interesting could really help kick it up a notch, even if it was just the tonal variation of hue. Um, but yeah, I think probably if you wanted to really pop them, it would be taking control of the light on that copper gold color, having some more purple tones in the shadows and more silver tones in the highlights. But good looking unit. It really it came out very well. So uh, yeah, thanks for submitting. Okay. So next up, we've got um, Guy. Uh, new to the hobby, painted around 20 minis, first army you've painted. Uh, opinion on the color scheme and advice on how to uh, improve the painting, sure. Well, 20 minis in, here's my advice to you. Ready? I wouldn't even need to look at the minis. Keep pushing your contrast, work on your brush control, uh, and, you know, keep refining uh, your various paint technique, right? Like, be, making sure you can apply the paint as a glaze and all those things. Like, 20 minis is nothing. You're brand new. I don't mean that as any insult. I just mean, like, if, if a fourth grader came to me and said they were really concerned about getting good, you know better with math, I'd be like, well, you got a long way to go. We're not quite to differential equations yet, right? So now, all that being said, I think you did a nice job here. Um, you're clearly, you've done a good job. You've, you've learned. I really like how you're executing on things. Things like the crystals on their, uh, on their bases look really nice. Uh, I think that the skin in your, or I guess whatever is kind of fleshy stuff. I don't know if it's actually skin or just exposed muscle. Whatever this stuff is. I think that looks nice and cleanly executed. The black is a little flat. Um, it doesn't feel like it has the same level of contrast as everything else should, uh, or sh as it should, given the materials, um, especially down here on these guys. Uh, and then same with the, uh, this is a nice shot here, uh, same with the orange, which also tends to feel quite samey, like we didn't integrate enough shadows and highlights into the orange part, which I assume is some kind of orange inner glow in some cases. So we definitely want to have like hot spots and low lights where it's not as warm. Um, I think your handling of the blue energy is really nice. Um, like that glow in his hand. You need to smooth out with some glazes just a little. But for the most part, I think it's a cool look. And I think you executed on it pretty well. So these guys are fun. Uh, keep pushing. Keep working that. Everything I said at the beginning. And uh, yeah, man. Great. Great looking army. You did. I mean, this is for 20 figs in. You're you're killing it. Keep going. Okay. Next up. Carol. Uh, only recently started painting for effect, not for quantity. Uh Appreciate some rough feedback on color choices and general composition. So, yeah, I thought about this a lot when I looked at these guys. I think they look nice. 
Uh, I think that composition wise, we need to break up some of them a little more. So like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go bang, 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 left to right here. So we'll start with homie G here on the side. Uh, you know, great fig, uh, obviously, you know, Nurgle figs always are very characterful and stand out. Some of these elements feel like they need to be different colors. If you look at the artwork, you'll see how they break up the helmet being like silver and the gut plate being silver, but then the armor itself being green. They do that because the fig is so dominated that it, it becomes kind of overwhelming if it's all in one tone. So, you know, breaking up the composition of the figure by having slightly different colors, things actually with real hues, I mean, given right now they're, it's yellow, that's its hue, but making it not just like this metallic yellow or gold color or whatever would really go a long way to sell it. Um, the, God, the other two, the main issue actually rests with the skin, like a needing to push more uh, variation into the skin, more purples and browns and... Uh, or reds, uh, in the case of the guy on the right, it would be like orange tones and purple tones and stuff like that, and then breaking the highlights up more through integrations of like Caucasian flesh tones or stuff like that as the highlights to capture the light reflections on darker toned skin. Um, that's going to be my main feedback for you there. So again, a lot of it's just continuing to push that sort of contrast. Compositionally, I think it's nice in the whole. I like that you have the purple element carrying throughout. I don't see as much of it over on this guy. Um, so I'd like to see a little more of this purple that you've integrated here in some places over on this to, as I mentioned earlier, kind of have those minimal elements to tie people together, I think would look good. Uh, like if this, I don't know why you didn't do this sash around him in this purple. It would have been the perfect choice and would have really tied these guys together. And as it is, it would separate the sash that he's wearing from his open guts and rot, which are basically the same color. But, you know, if they were, if this was this purple, it would stand out and be very different. It would also contrast really nicely against his darker toned skin and against the yellow of the, uh, the armor. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, uh, Patrick, uh, started painting about a year ago. IG is your second army. Uh, it definitely fits better. Next month is armor. Armor doesn't mean armor you're wearing. Armor means tanks, vehicles, airplanes. So, no, these would not fit. Uh, and I would have deleted it. So it's good that you submitted it this much, this month. Um, okay. Uh, overall composition on tones and so on and so forth. Okay. Yep. Also looking for tips to chip and weather the red armor. Uh, yeah. So my answer is, uh, I think these guys look great. Doing a nice job. They do need chipping and weathering. Rust tones work fine on both reds and blues um, because it's browns and oranges are, you know, pretty universally great. Um, but you, what you do with the red to make it stand out, you, so I've got, you know, hobby cheating like 90, 90s, somewhere in the 90s, when I talk about chipping and battle damage, um, that's would be the place you want to be. Go check that out. That technique goes and breaks down a lot of the stuff. I've chipped reds and blues and yellows and every color under the sun using the methods I talk about in that video. With the reds, you'll want it to stand out a little more, so you're going to work some black into your brown to get the deep shadows, and then you can have some little orange higher, uh, running in there, and you can run some brown streaks down from it. And I actually think you need to pop the red up a little more in some places. It doesn't have quite the same level of contrast as the blue. The blue armor here looks really fantastic. I think that's the that you've executed on really nicely. Um, also, like the weapons, think they came out well. Um, this guy's is a little messy up here in this area where it kind of feels like it's not messy in the right way. Um, as the rest of these do, the rest of these feel pretty messy in the right way. So I'd say that's where you want to go. Love the skin tone of the orcs and things like that, but working in the red, careful not to do it so completely evenly where it goes red to green, because then it makes it look like you're exposing muscle. You want some smoothing of the red to the, the red lips into the green there, unless they have like real bunched up lower lips like this. Then you can then you can pop out just the um uh just the red color. Uh because it'll look like it's hanging down and you're you can't see the transition. Uh but yeah with the red I'd recommend you know again you're gonna start with a black brown, you're gonna stipple around some things, make some scratches, hashes, dots, stuff like that. Then you're gonna bury in a little a little stipple of some lighter brown in the middle of the black brown to again create contrast. Then a couple little dots of orange. You're gonna low light the scratch so if this is the hole then there's going to be a line down here at the bottom assuming the light's coming from above that's sort of that bright red and uh you're going to go from there so uh that's what i would say overall fantastic looking unit iron jaws is an awesome army um yeah and you can really see the difference in contrast by the way when you look at this photo like just to put a pin on what i was talking about right like look at the contrast you have on the blue now look at the contrast on the red Right? It's not even close. Right? Here? Here. 
here, 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 right? I mean, that, that tells the story right there. So, hope that helps, Patrick. All right, next up, Bartos. Uh, feedback on these classies, classic 90s Ungors. Uh, critique on the shields and the banner. And uh, when working with the oils, I find it difficult to see where the blends are smooth while the oils are wet and glossy. It's only once they're dry a week later they often catch your eyes. I don't, don't look how I wanted them to. Uh, any tips for dealing with that? Any other thoughts that you have on the unit would be appreciated. Thanks so much. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I can see some areas where you didn't get it mixed as much. My answer is just be drawing your brush over everything. It should You should be smoothing things almost instantly. So if they're not having that happen, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, but you want to just be taking that dry brush and just working around the whole thing. The other thing is if you find out a week later that that's happened, who cares? Go back over it. Put, drop, do the second pass. Like, so on, let's talk about this front guy here. We got this hard lines, right, that don't make any sense. Great. Lay in some of that white gray and just feather out the oil paints. Done and dusted. Job's are good and you'll smooth right out that line. You can go back for a second pass with oil paints. There's no issue with that. Okay. Uh, now, as to the freehand and stuff on the shields, thinks it look, I think it looks great. Great classic Ungor stuff there. The uh, little shirt strap, whatever, uh, with the PVA glue. Love it. Very creative. Looks like a nice thick cloth banner. I have got no issues. So, good stuff. Yeah, I got I got no feedback for you in that. I think that came out really well. So, overall, cool unit, man. Uh, this, this beast army you've been building over the last year or two is going to truly be a thing to behold. All right, Jasper. So he's looking for feedback on his, uh, source. And basically he was looking, he's looking for schematic advice more so than technical. And he was trying to make them look like they're made of stars. I'll tell you right now, that's a really, so, so here's my thing, Jasper. That's really hard to sell. And the reason it's so hard to sell is because they're not made of stars. They're a physical thing that has physical elements placed on it already. What's easy to make like it look like it's full of stars is a flat piece of paper I paint on, right? Because it has no existing texture, right? Things that have texture don't want to be another thing, right? So I, I appreciate what you're going for, but I think you might need to take it a little le you know, less literally, right? So um, the green, I feel like we need to... So with the, let, let me talk about the green part first, because that's, you know, whatever, as, as far as like not technically being specific stars. Um, my answer with that is just, you know, work on kind of smoothing that out. I would make the blades a different color. They probably shouldn't be green that you need like a better contrasting element there. So I would have made them the same black and blue, like as though they have star blades or something like that. Right. And on the blade edge, by the way, that's a place where you could sell the star effect really easily. Think of like Michael Moorcox. Uh, um, I can't think of his name right now. Michael Moorcox. How you spell his name? Elric. That's his name. Why can I think of that? His sword. All right. So, uh, Elric's sword is like this, you know, crazy universe thing that has like real black with like sort of this crazy energy and stars and stuff in it. It's often painted in that way. So, at any rate, um, that kind of stuff is what you could really sell there. Look up Elric's sword and you can find some good examples of it. Now, on the actual body itself, my best advice is I like I don't mind the blacker color as the undertone, but vary the the scales. No, I don't think it's a problem to highlight them individually. I think that's it's time consuming. I mean, you're going to lose your mind depending on how many of these you do. But the answer is you need to mix up the color pattern through the various stellar colors. So you should have some scales be blue and some scales be white and some scales be pink and some scale, you know, like that faded star pattern color right like when you see the stars scattered when people do those kinds of things in the street it's always stuff like that right it's always that kind of like light electric blue light pink white right those are the various star colors and that's what i would kind of mix them up as it's going to make them cacophonous but if you, as long as you spread it out evenly and then have the very neutral tone as the green to balance them out it'll work better it's still going to be hard to sell i'll be honest with you like, this is not an easy thing to sell, and somebody's not going to likely look at it and think, oh, neat, they're a galaxy. It's just probably not what's going to happen, okay? Uh, because it's just unlikely that you can... Because this thing is a lizard shape with lizard scales, it isn't just, like, made of stars, <laughs> right? Um, when you think... Like, think of Eternity in Marvel Comics. I keep Googling stuff this time. Marvel... Uh, eternity and infinity yeah there you go these two okay so like yeah here boom 
Okay, Eternity is full of universes and stuff, right? But look at how no texture is pulled out on him. Like, he has no features in him other than uh, the edges of his cloak and then a little bit of his face, right? And everything else is flat, two-dimensional, right? And that's because if they if you tried to put this over muscle texture and arms and biceps and everything like that, it just wouldn't sell as much, right? So, there you go. All right, next up. Uh, Clay, uh, semi-converted stone guard. Uh, and so he's mentioning that he has, you know, an injury and can't really stabilize to hold things. So I'll give you two options here, Clay. I, I read this earlier. So here's option one. When you're trying to do the edges, I want you to rest your elbows on something. I want you to lock your wrists together like this. So your elbows are on, on the table, on something solid. Like they have to be on a table. Wrists are locked, right? We're going to put our one hand around our other hand, okay? And we're going to hold the brush choked up. See how choked up on the brush I am? Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to just very carefully trace and trace, okay? We're going to get in there like that. Now, if you've got to, if you, if the miniature's not flat, if you've got to hold the miniature at the same time, here's our holder for our miniature, and we're going to put that into our hand like that. Wrap this around it, sit this up against it. So again, hand is still resting hand, right? Same thing, we choke way up and we go like that, okay? Now, if the condition is such that you still have some shake and you can't do it, that's okay. Don't worry, we got an easy answer for you, okay? We can still solve that problem. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a nice, soft makeup brush, something like this, like a dry brush, okay? You're gonna get a little bit of a lighter color than what you want, like say a light blue or something on it, okay? Or, or a light blue white. You're gonna work it off the, the bristles until there's basically nothing left. I mean, I want you to work into the paper, into your paper towel until there's almost nothing there. And then you're gonna just very quickly, just lightly in a real fast light touch motion, just work your way across the surface. Oh, so lightly. Look at how lightly I'm touching my hand, right? Just. Very light, okay? And then if you get some paint where it shouldn't be, that's okay. You can always just take some black and just lightly touch into those other areas that aren't the edges. Try one of those two things, see if they help you out. But you don't risk as much when, you're, when, you're, um, when your dry brush has got that little paint on it. You might have to move your paint, your dry brush over the surface 50 times to really make a difference. Fine, but then, then it's working with your shake, right? If you've got a shake there, because you just, you just let it go. Just let it shake over the mini and you'll be good. These look great, good stuff. I hope that helps, Clay. Okay, next up, uh, Benton with his Aldari Wraith Blades. Um, so going for like a medium tabletop. Uh, so feedback, how to tie the unique colors of each model together here. I've tried white helmets, red hair, purple stomach cavities. Yeah, so I looked at these guys earlier um, I mean, again, how you want to tie them together is you want to create some unifying element across them, right? Uh, why did that happen? Some kind of unifying element across them that is the same color. Like, so I know you've got the different elements here, but they need to have something the same. Could also be like the symbol you put on all their white heads, but just a blank white head isn't enough. Now, if they all had the same logo, I don't know, team name on the front of them, then I think that's fine. Honestly, my biggest challenge, so that's kind of how I do that. My biggest challenge is I think you might want to work on some paint consistency here and, and just like, you know, making sure things are smooth in your paint application. Like there's a lot of sort of chonkiness to some of this paint, especially some of the whiter stuff. Um, you know, wouldn't use pure white like this. Um, you want to make sure your paint's applied cleanly. You can see where white is still in the red there. And as always, you know, keep pushing that contrast. Okay. So I hope that helps. But yeah, like a symbol or something on their face could help tie them together. Okay, next up, Antonio, um, Hammer Brothers, Boomerang, Fire, and Hammer from Super Mario. Uh, sure. Uh, expert critique on helping create unity when the sculpture is similar, but the colors are separate. I, I think you did through making the rock skin that they have, or whatever it is, the same color. I think that's how you created unity. I do not think there's any discordance here that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be here. Um, they all appear to be the same type of creature, 
the rock highlighting I think you executed on rather nicely. Um, you may want to focus a little more volumetrically so that some up here at the top is a little higher than some down here at the bottom, but that's a min minimal touch. Where I actually saw opportunities for improvement were a little more texture and stuff like that on the actual colors, so the green, the red, the blue. Um, having some scratches or stuff like that in the boots or different variation, but your contrast is nice. Um, some of the metal appears very flat, like the swords and the metal around here and things like that. But the actual color execution, their skin and their shells with the chitin and the texture, um, yeah, looks great, man. I don't think you need to bring them together any more than you did. So I think you did a good job. Yeah, cool stuff. I have no idea who made these figs, but it's neat. And if you made the plinths, well done. That's super cool. Okay, next up, uh, Daniel has his Grimwatch, and he had said, like, please be very vicious. Uh, <laughs> sure, I don't, I'm not going to do that, but I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so Daniel, I looked over these earlier, and I think where we want to focus in on is you, we need a little more control. I like the, the, the variation of hue in the skin. I think he did a nice job working in purples and pinks, but now we need to focus on the volumetric highlighting. There's still not enough, like, the top of his head is basically the same color as the top of this side, is here, is here, is here. You know, like, it's all kind of the same. We don't really, we aren't really heating the volumes. They just kind of appear to be these squishy, gelatinous masses because we didn't bring out any of the actual volumes of the minis, right? So that's why I think you need to focus on next. Like you've worked in the hue, now take control of them to also take control of the value, right? And make them nice and, and, and dark. Um, as to the blood, of course, it's crazy, but I mean, it's all over the base, so I don't think it's a problem. It's interesting that it's you know, sort of spread over everything. Um, the biggest challenge I see is stuff like, we gotta keep pushing contrast of value. Uh, and then looking at popping detail on stuff like the bones, the bat wings, things like that. Those are still very flat, very boring, like this bone here, these bones here, these bones here. So again, continuing to really put both the texture and the contrast into those elements, not just <coughs> the skin and stuff, stuff like that, okay? So I hope that was harsh enough for you, Daniel. Cool unit, good job. Hope to see more from you in the future. All right, next up, uh, the Deathwing Spearhead. Uh, yeah, so I took a look at these guys earlier. They look really nice. Um, overall, I think the biggest thing I saw with them is opportunity for more contrast and volumetric highlighting, especially on the white. Um, the white looks rather uniformly applied all the way around. It looks like it could use some more application of shadow. What's there is kind of soft. So I think if we had a little more shadow up underneath, a little more like the bottom of the knees, the inside of these, the bottom of their heads and stuff like that, that's the number one thing I see as an opportunity for improvement. Other than that, there's a couple areas where I'd continue to, again, push contrast stuff like the reds. The reds are very flat around the guns. Feels like that could go uh, a little farther. Uh, I like the wing execution, the sort of blue-white wings, classically. Um, so, you know, color-wise, I think you're in place with the sort of traditional color schemes. Uh, and I think that the blue-white is executed well. The green, again, could use a little more contrast pushed up a little more. Um, it works well if you push it up using the same ivory as the the guys themselves that way again there's some harmony between the tones there so uh very cool big uh, big force there so looks really neat all right alan um so he said he you know hopes he can paint in the, f in the future and uh two questions he had about both the transfers and then the blue armor doing going with like a zenithal and then applying a color so i'm going to tell you both real easy so when you do a transfer Here's the key. First of all, you should be using Microsol and Microset. That's these two, okay? And making sure you run um, several different layers of uh, Microsol over the top a couple times. That softens the decal way down. Once that's done, you're gonna put a, a layer of either satin or gloss varnish over the whole surface, over the armor, to the, de to the decal, to the armor, okay? Whoosh. You're gonna let that dry. Then you're gonna mat it out. That gloss varnish is going to make the decal be indistinguishable from everything else all right so that's what i'll say there now as to the zenithal and the airbrushing it doesn't sell because you you kind of blasted it and then just went back in and turned it blue like this still needs the shoulder pad that's facing up would still have color variation on it right so there needs to be a shadow down here on this side thin shadow here up this ridge a brighter highlight here a brighter highlight here and so on and so forth. So the airbrush is a perfectly fine way to get started, but unless you're a surgeon with it where you can go in and hit those areas specifically, you gotta go in and you gotta do the, the brush work to really create the individual plates. Again, like I've talked about many times, you don't have any like black line here in between. We just blasted it with the airbrush and called it a day, right? 
So we got to get those dark in there, the dark lines around the knuckles, things like that. This should be, you know, dark. This should be dark. This should be a much brighter highlight. This should be a much brighter highlight, you know, with a center line down, that kind of stuff. We still got to go in there and then do the other work. The Zenithal can be a good starting point, but it also feels very heavy. Like it feels like the blue you use is a very bright blue that has a high opacity and kind of blew away some of your work because um, it should look more faded. Uh, so there you go. There's my answer, Alan. Uh, hope that helps. All right, Seth. Uh, after 20 years calling these sisters done, he was looking for success of the overall color scheme and composition. Um, the best way to, to take the brass fittings and filigree to the next level, suggestions to improve their hair, and then anything else that jumps out. Well, that's quite a lot, Seth. All right. So, but I can hit it for you real simple. The answer is across the board contrast, just period, to all four of your questions. Okay. So the white, again, needs shadow, needs complexity in it. If you're going to do this cream armor, you don't want to fall into brown. That just makes it look muddy. So warm highlights equal cold shadows, again, falling into something like a Payne's gray, something lightly mixed in to create more volumetric highlighting around the white armor. On the brass and the gold pieces and stuff like that, again, it's the same thing. You have it there, you want to bring in some purple tones, stuff like that, and it needs to be highlighted up with silvers. I don't particularly love the color we chose here that stands out against it, honestly. It kind of is like a very... The, the yellow tone, the tear is very similar. I've never liked any of the sisters' color schemes that are base. I think they're all bad. Um, that's not on you at all. That's just, I don't feel like the original people who decided the sisters color schemes did it very imaginatively. Um, and the, um, and like that, I would pick a more bright cold gold that will contrast better against the white, honestly. Now as to the hair, I mean, we need to go watch like my, any, any of my videos on hair, brown hair, blonde hair, white hair, black hair. I've, I've done them all. But again, we need to create that Pantene ring light, right? So you're, especially with their hair, their hair is the perfect Pantene example. But you want that light catching around the ring of the head, you know, up like that, then a little bit here at the center next to the the, the um, part, and then a little bit down on the very end, and then the shadows in between. You're doing that by tracing those nice thin lines in there and getting that going. So, but the story here is contrast all the way around, pushing up the highlights, taking down the shadows, that kind of thing. The same thing's true on like the ivory of the guns and all that sort of stuff. So, hope that helps, Seth. All right, next up, Philip, uh, aiming for a combination of something that looks good on the table and reasonable efficiency for a big army project. Uh, so, yeah, talking about how to make that more reflective look work with weathered, dirty look. So you, you just do because it still has light to it. Uh, I mean, it's. You can have weathered stuff that still has a, a reflection to it, right? So, um, I, and I think you need to to really break up that black, especially since black doesn't really show weathering very well. So it's not really going to make a huge difference. The thing that jumped out to me the most is the white is over weathered in some places. Like it looks like we just got wash or oil or something stuck under here in like these big, this big tide mark or this stuff or this stuff. Like it doesn't feel like a stain of dirt. So if you're going to go that direction, it should be organically coming up from the, the bottom with like a stippling motion to get it up there. Um, I like the use around the shoulders. I think that feels more organic. That feels correct to me. Um, but on the whole, I think your scheme works. I would work a little more color into the bases. Try to mix in some reds, some oranges, some browns, some greens, something like that. There's a little bit in here. It needs to go farther. It needs a little more highlight as well. Probably a second layer of, you know, dry brushing or something like that just to bring all those edges out and really create some visual interest. So... That'll still doing that kind of stuff still fast, easy, keeps you in the tabletop land, uh, but gives you a good looking tabletop standard. So hope that helps. All right, next up, Darren, uh, for a Stormcast, uh, the Raven is just a Photoshop thing right now, but he wants to work on a decal for it. Uh, so what he's looking for is it's an army. He doesn't want to spend too much time. Any tips on making the armor grittier whilst keeping the cool tone of the miniature? He doesn't want traditional rust. Sure. Do the same thing as rust. Just do it a different color. It's fine. Um, if you watch the adding extra steps to the Chaos Warrior video, I used like bright verdigris to do the rust with and to do rust streaks and stuff on my Chaos Warriors with crimson armor because I didn't want browns in them. Rust is a function of how something looks. It's that stippling and chipping and streaking. It can be done with any color. Um, and as a point of fact, it's not like rust is some uh, rust, which is just oxidation, has no singular effect. We tend to think of that with iron, but I mean, who knows? But there's lots of other examples. If you go look at rust pigments, I mean, there's yellow and red and magenta and ochre and everything else under the sun, right? 
So you can play around with all that. But yeah, you could have them, you know, scratches and, and stipples and, and stuff like that working with vertigree colors, for example, like I did. That would be a perfectly fine pick, right? So it could be leaking something like that. It could have a more green tone to it, right? Maybe it, it's sort of oxidizing in more like copper wood or something like that. Uh, there's lots of ways you can play with it, and that's kind of what I'd recommend. Um, I understand you don't want to spend too much time on each guy. I think I'd still work on the cloth a little bit more, pop that up uh, just a tad, um, you know, because it just, especially up at the top of them, it feels like it needs a little more of a highlight, a little bit. Um, but other than that, I think you've, you know, you got a good scheme going here. I think it looks nice. You can also just focus on regular hashes and scratches instead of full on rust, right? Like, so get that nice, super sharp, thin brush, get your sharp, thin lines going, and just t -t 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 little dots, little hashes, little scratches, call it a day. That can make them look weathered without too much. Uh, you know, Sam Lenz is a pretty big uh, proponent of that, and he do he makes it look great. So you can go look at his stuff, like when he did Gazagul's armor, you can see exactly that kind of tactic in play. So there you go. Hope that helps, Darren. All right, next up, Lee, um, first fully painted unit, uh, one with a dogwood vibe. Uh, been trying, been painting for about a year with a two-year break in between. Uh, looking for any and all CNC. Yeah, I mean, my honest answer to you here, uh, Lee, is going to be, you know, continue to push that brush control, that color control, that contrast. It feels like we're not getting our base coats on smooth. Um, one thing that I'll say the scale line is not very good for is, like, I like scale colors a lot, um, but they're not good for base coating, honestly. Because they're they tend to be very transparent. They're hard to use. They're a gel. That's why I don't stick to one paint line. Something like a Vallejo or a Pro Acryl is going to give you a much better base coat, and then I use the scales to blend over top of it, right? Like that's why this green looks really weak and spotty and stuff like that because it's just not made for it. Um, you know, right tool, right purpose. You see a screw in the wall, you don't that's you know that's loose. You don't get out a hammer, right? So, um, but again, we need to work on the brush control and the cleanliness of the application. Somewhere in here, you know, in some places in here, I know where we got some paint jumping in places it shouldn't be. We want to really work on getting a nice smooth base coat down of the color, um, getting that color really cleanly applied. And then we want to work on contrast, you know, bringing those blends up, popping those colors out. Especially on the green, when you got a tone like that, you want to really make sure it has contrast to it because it's the bright element of your mini. So it needs to be fully popped out and, uh, and, and, and rocking. Okay, so uh, watch my understanding contrast video, stuff like that, and keep practicing. Okay, Edwin, uh, first time posting, trying to make an army pop. What tips could you give me to make them pop even more? Sure. So I looked these guys over earlier. I like that you've got the freehand. Bases look super cool. Um, biggest thing I noticed was the black armor is pretty flat. Um, you know, it just doesn't have the, the variation I'd expect. Same with a little bit of the red around the side. Everything here is clean. I love how clean you're painting. Like the gold, that works for me. Needs a little bit more yellow mid-tone. Doesn't have quite enough three. Doesn't have quite enough five. But for the most part, it works. Like it, you know, we need to go a little darker and we need to extend out the volumes of our mid-tones just a little, but it's working. Um, the biggest thing is I think we just need to punch some more uh, uh, contrast of value into the black. That's literally the biggest thing that stood out to me. This is a great looking Dawn Rider unit. I'd certainly notice if I was judging. So just keep pushing that contrast. I think you're doing great stuff here. All right, next up, we've got William. First time posting, most recent unit is Grash Racks. Uh, so I think, again, most of what I've said here so far, again, more contrast. I noticed it, especially in the skin. Um, the I like how you've used the greens here. This is kind of what I was talking about before, you know, punching in those yellows and stuff to make the green pop. I think you need to carry it out through, through everything. Like, some of these elements have really nice highlights and things to them. Some of them are really flat, like this little leaf she's jumping off of or whatever, right? So, um, you know, but the orange skin is what I see as being really flat. Like, there's no texture, there's no fur, there's no variation. We really got to push that contrast and punch it way, way up. So that's what I would really focus on. Much more variation of hue and value, especially on the flesh. All right, next up, Robin. Uh, so I've got some untamed beasts here. Uh, yes, we do need some better photos. I, I'll say that for sure. Like, set the photos down. Don't use direct lighting. Put a background up. Take a picture with your camera. Okay? Like, find a spot in the house. Put some lights not directly at them. Or turn lights on in the room. Non-direct lighting. Adjust with your camera. Shoot. Don't make it more complicated than it is. But we're going to look at this photo. Because it's probably the best photo in here. So, I like what you're pushing for with the skin. And the contrast there, I think you were successful. Now we got to take it to the rest of the model, right? We got to still, again, get that cleanliness in there, get those dark lines separating things. 
um, especially on stuff like the helmet to the fur, things like that. Um, but we've got to create those contrasts in those other elements. Like the skin has really nice values of reds and purples. It's got really good contrast. Then I look at these horns and they're just little zebra stripes all the way down. There's this part isn't any darker than this part or here or here. They're the exact same from beginning to end with no variation whatsoever, right? And I don't know what's going on there. Same with the bone like here on this guy's top or this guy's bone here. Like, so we got to get a lot, you know, get that stuff clean, bright, popping. You want to be bringing them all into the same light. Um, bring them all up to the level that you did the skin at. You re It's clear that you took a lot of time on the skin, did a great looking job, and then the rest of the mini doesn't feel like it's at the same level. Okay, so there you go. Hope that helps. All right, uh, Matthew, uh, so with his uh, Retributor Squad, Test Army for his 3,000 point uh, Sisters Army, uh, what's the next step in terms of contrast, brush control of separation of elements? Uh, this is a lot of questions, Matthew. This is too many questions, <laughs> okay? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not, I can't do a novel for you, buddy, all right? No. One question, maybe two. Eight is too many. I appreciate you said if time allows. It doesn't, <laughs> okay? What's the next step in terms of contrast, brush control, separation of elements? What can I do to improve these scheme? Why do my oil paints sometimes unbind, separate, lose contrast over time? Like on the purity seals, uh, it seems like they were blended smoothly. Is the placement of the NMM reflections close enough to correct placement? Should I be redoing the reflections as they come too dull, blended, thick? Are the bases too big and chunky? Does the copper outline muddy marble the effect work? Is it normal for thin paint to be incredibly model over black? Even after several coats, I'd switch to white ink after fighting chunkiness with a white paint. Even with a scale color, artist white reaching chunky white opacity around three coats. Objectively, did I reach the tabletop plus standard parade ready? What am I missing to accomplish to reach that standard? <gasps> Okay, so let's get into it. All right, I'm gonna take. We're gonna start from the ground up here. Okay, uh, we gotta find a picture here. All right. So, first off, with the ground, don't do this. Don't put big chunks of stuff over the top of the base, extending outside of it like that. You can extend a base a little bit. Don't extend it a lot. Okay, like little tiny things can poke over the side sometimes. Don't go crazy. When you have that, like, this doesn't look like it's sitting on the base. This looks like you took a giant chunk of rock, slapped it down on the base. It doesn't feel like it's part of any world. That's because I can't see any world around it. That needs to be smaller. It needs to be shrunk. Don't do that. Like, don't do that thing. This, no good. If this was cut down to be smaller than the base itself, these would look ten times better right out of the gate. Number one. Number two, on the, the bases themselves, pop them up a little more. Okay? Like, they need to have more highlight, more catch to something okay now let's move up into the armor the black armor right so we've got inconsistent in the way we're highlighting these like i had to look at these a couple times because i honestly thought the the chest armor was like made of a different material than the rest of the the armor like i their corset is separate but this is just armor so either all of the black needs to come to this broad highlight or this should not be this broad of a highlight over their chest. Like, we've got to take control of this light here. So, this one is probably, like, this really shows it off. Like, this just looks like literally a different color armor than this. Okay? So, we've got to get, like, as far as uh, applicate, like, if we're working in oils and you're using my, my oils technique, right? Then you've got to smooth that out and make sure you're pushing the same highlights over the whole thing. Okay? And again, volumetrically, like the backpack on this feels the closest to correct. But look at other where other people have placed highlights on this. Look in the art, right? And look where they place the highlights and how they do the colors. You can you you can like this is too much white. This has lost any semblance of blackness. But these are fine. Shoulders fine. Backpack's great. So this is what you need to be aiming at across the whole surface. Okay, the red. Red needs much more shadows. Needs to push much farther. Okay. Um, bird needs more contrast, needs more definition, individual elements picked out. We still need to keep working on that paint cleanliness. Like, things need to be more separated. Dark lines in between, light lines. You want light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, right? And you, so the more you can alternate that with confidence, the better, right? So for example, I'll give you a very simple example right here on this girl. You've got this piece stretching down the middle, like the, whatever this thing is that runs down the middle of her. There's no light on that. That could be highlighted. Right? Each edge of those could be highlighted. Like when I did my recent sister, I traced around the edge like three of the edges of every one of those pieces. Right, That creates light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. Right there. 
seven color changes or whatever in that space. Right? That's visual. That, that creates that visual interest. Okay. Now, um, so again, the key is going to be like we got to get that black armor balanced out. Go and look at you know what they did again. You want a soft highlight. It can go up to white at the very very highest points. Okay. Now, why does oil paint sometimes unblend, separate, or lose contrast? They're gonna they're not unblending. They're just losing contrast because they dry. When it's wet, water is reflective. Right? Even if it's not water, it's white spirit. It's like, my hand is now shiny. Right? I didn't paint it. It didn't change contrast. It's just wet. So it's reflecting light. Right? So when your white spirits are in there, it's very shiny paint. And so that white throws it off. Makes it look brighter than it is. Looks different than it is. It's going to dull as the paint settles. Is the placement of the NMM reflections close enough? The backpack looks good. The legs look good. You know, but I would go watch. Like, again, just look at the actual art. Or go look at other people like, you know, go look at high-end folks who've tackled sisters and that'll give you your light placement. This is a fig that's been painted thousands of times by high-end painters, right? So you've got all the maps you want in the world. Uh, I answered the base uh, already. Um, is it normal for thinned paint to be incredibly modeled over black even after several coats? Um, yes, it can happen because you're talking about uh white paint over black like you can't do that you've got to build up to it right you you can't paint it's the, the highest possible value transition you could have just done right you can't put white directly over black it's got to build up you've got to go white to a low gray to a mid gray to a high gray to white or something like that if you really want a smooth transition like you will never cover pure black with pure white it's just the nature of acrylic paints or even oil paints just says that's not going to happen okay so are you at a tabletop standard? Yeah, sure, absolutely you are. Yes. Keep pushing those contrasts and stuff like that, and then, then we'll get us more. All right. Alan, Morgwaith's Blade Coven. Uh, looks really good. I, I looked at these guys earlier. Again, I see the non-metallic. This is, uh, I love this. I love how this came out. Um, really like the gold. The gold needs a little more one, a little more white. Some catches, especially here on the Sisters of Slaughter's head. A couple other catch lights and stuff like that is what I'd love to see you focus on. Silver, I'm digging. We need to smooth the blends just a little bit in between our darkest spaces. We're dropping like way into the dark real fast, and I don't feel we earned it quite that quickly. So a little bit more of a smooth, like take that darkness and just glaze that smooth out just a little bit. Love the, uh, uh, love the snake body. Um, that looks good. That looks familiar. I like that. Um, the... Uh, the, the corsets and stuff like that, that is red with contrast. I am loving it. I'm here for it. ba da 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 Like, this is her, the, the reds and the way you handle the contrast there is fantastic. So, great, great, absolute success. Alan, these guys are, or these girls, I should say, I apologize, are just top-notch. I, I really love what you executed on here. Um, yeah, looks, looks wonderful. So, there's my feedback for you. Wonderful, wonderful Blade Coven. All right, Stephen, uh, Queen City Aurorans for Blood Bowl. Uh, focus on improving contrast in general, but also feel like your skin needs work. I agree with both statements. I think you've nailed it. Those would be the two things I would tell you to work on, um, especially the contrast in the metal. I actually think things like the contrast in the feathers uh, is fine. Some of the reds look okay. We need to push it a little farther. The blues look rather flat, but the metals look really flat, right? That's where we need to work on that true metallic metal and really... Really take control of that light, control those shadows, pop those highlights. Okay, um, but these look really nice. Like the, it's clean, it's well executed, they're bright. I mean, like the, it's these are very good. So please, Stephen, don't take it any other way. But I, I completely agree with your assessment. Keep pushing in those directions. More tonal variation or value contrast on the metal, and a little more variation of hue and value in the skin. Uh, but good job. Okay, Liam, uh, old Shadow Spear box. Uh, okay, uh, painting these to the high tabletop standard. I'd be super grateful if you could give me some pointers on my volumetric shading highlighting. Um, sure. So, um, yeah, if we're going for the matte, it feels like we still need to push a little more shadow in there, especially on stuff like the arms. Uh, again, like just this is what I do every month because I really feel impressed to show this. Like this is to impress upon people. Look at how dark this is, right? 
compared to this. I'm in a very bright room with lights all around me bouncing in all directions, primarily from above, but not only. Like, this is much like being outdoors. And look at how significant the shadows are, right? So I think people sometimes hold back because they're like, well, it's not realistic to have that kind of shadow. Again, yes. Yes, it is. Like, shadows are strong under bright lights. All right. So I think, you know, you could do that without really spending too much more time or stuff on that. So I think that would be where I would probably push you to go. Really just deepening down the shadows. I think your highlights are fine. You could push those a teeny bit more, but I wouldn't, you know, it's not that the main area. The main areas, I don't feel like we have enough five. Not, so yeah, that's where I'd tell you to go. But cool, cool stuff overall. I like how they came out. Um, I like the blue. I think that works good. You might want to extend the, the white just a, a little more to kind of take control there. Like fade, I don't mean like just extend pure white. I mean glaze some of that white out from it um, just to kind of fade some of it. It feels like we're really consistent. Like this is all the same color blue and then white and then all the same color blue and then white and then all the same color blue and then white. All right. We need to take that white and stretch it out as a glaze. So there's a little more like white blue than white, you know, white, white blue and then white blue and then white, blue, blue and thin blue. Right. That kind of thing. Okay, next up, uh, Eugen, uh, submission from February, feedback, some critique for the animal skin texture. Um, yeah, I mean, we need to keep pushing it, right, is really the simplest answer I have for you. There is not enough contrast of value or hue. Uh, like, so, again, when you're dealing with fur, I have I have a video on how to paint fur on creatures that don't have fur. Um, Andy Wardle also has an excellent video on Call to Paint that deals with the same thing, things like this horse, stuff like that. There's just not enough attention paid here to the volumetric highlights, the contrast of value and to the texture which is the most important thing with stuff like this like the hair is too flat the bones are too flat the spear is too flat the fur is too flat everything's too flat right so we really got to push that value up and uh and and add to that so uh you know adding in fur texture and paying more attention to the volumetric highlights like they just they do not feel volumetrically highlighted at all is the short answer to your question so there you go all right cole uh okay uh so um, going for kind of dark and gritty look. Any ideas on different detail and space rings you could use to similarly elevate the units up to the standards? I mean, I think these guys look good for what you're going for. Like, you know, you're going for this tabletop standard. You're using the red metal technique. You can do some more scratch and wear on the armor. Show some ex exposed steel, not silver. Steel. Um, you can have uh, a little more contrast and stuff like popping the gold up. The gold feels rather flat and just kind of like... Pfft, it's gold and there's not really much tonal variation to it. That would probably be my number one thing I would go to. And then finally, as I've said many times, like bases, the world isn't full of gray stone. The world is full of color. So, you know, adding some color to those bases is probably a good way to go. All right, next up, Joseph, Ultramarine Terminator Assault Squad with Terminator Captain. Uh, first time using a light box, any CNC for mini photography would be appreciated. Um, yeah, I think the photography is fine. Um, again, with the biggest thing that jumps out of me, I mean, you know, good. Let's look at this picture. We, we've got too much direct lighting and not enough indirect lighting, by the by. Like, that's what you need to do. You need to, we need a lot more light that isn't directly focused on the thing. I honestly don't use a light box anymore because I don't love them. I, I need to do a new video on taking a photo. Um, I just think light boxes in the end don't really work for miniatures. But, like, I like a backdrop but not a box. Um, the biggest opportunity I see here is, is contrast, especially on the metals, which all appear rather flat. But it also happens on things like the cables, um, stuff like the claws need their bright edge highlights brought out. Um, the armor plates need some edges and things like that to really pop it up. That would take these really and elevate them to the next level. So uh, tonal variation on the metals, tonal variation uh, on things like the uh, things like the leathers and stuff like that. Those both appear very flat. And then uh, finally contrast and stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, on things like the basing and those other elements. So. Uh, the cables and those kinds of other things that all appear kind of just flat, like those smaller elements. You put a lot of work into some faces and kind of general highlighting of the armor, but then we didn't really go the end distance. So that's what I noticed there. All right, Kai. Uh, so, okay. So again, much the same thing. They look very nice, but we don't have the, so two thoughts here. One, again, we don't have the right amount of contrast. Um, we need more volumetric highlighting, stuff like that, more to control the light and shadows. Two, the edge highlights are way too fat, like way, 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 way too fat. 
So we got to get control of that. Go watch my video on sharp thin lines, and that'll give you um, good control over that because it's important with Space Marine armor. Like you can't have a line like this. There's two ways to do it. I have both an edge highlighting video and then a cheating at edge highlighting video where you could draw a line like this and then you come back in with this blue and you push the paint right up next to it. So you cheat your way into an ultra thin line. You can go either one of those directions and that would be fine. The other thing I'll say is this isn't battle damage. It just like it, it doesn't read like battle damage to me. It reads like paint. Um, you go watch my my battle damage video again. Uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, hobby cheating 90 something. And, you know, we need more smaller scale, small stipples, dots, scratches, stuff like that. Um, Darren Latham also has a great video on doing battle damage on Space Marines. His channel's still up magically. So um, watch that with those while you can. Uh, and I would say, you know, go watch either mine or his and uh, or both. And that'll give you some good idea on how to get that battle damage under control. Final thing, and I've said it a lot, stone is not gray. It is not cork. It does not look like this. Never put raw cork on your base. Always cover it with something, some kind of texture, some something. And stone isn't just stone. It isn't just gray. It has color. It has browns and reds and greens and purples and everything under the rainbow because nature is nature and it's random and organic. And that's how it should look. So there you go. Okay, uh, Jacob, uh, best of gores. Uh, first attempt at painting a whole unit and biggest project so far. Try to generate some oil colors in the process. What would be a good next step to improve in general? What would be a good next step when you tackle a unit again? Yeah, so I looked at these guys. These guys look really great, man. I really love the the striking, like extreme blue steel, blue steel, uh, of the of the best of gores. Really wonderful. Um, I honestly think that looks fantastic. The the challenge I have here is that the bones and kind of their skin and stuff like that aren't elevated to the same level. And I don't mean that just in because you worked an incredible amount of contrast and it's very striking. That's true. But also because they just don't feel like they're taken to the same level. Like the individual furs on, on the bottom of his little goatee isn't picked out. The bone feels kind of samey and doesn't really have the same level of control. The skull, again, doesn't have the same level of volumetric highlights. Um, the base itself, again, more, more detail and texture picked out. I know I do like the clothing that you have in this one, like the texture you added there. But again, like stuff like the leather straps here, um, when you got this big axe, you know, you want to make sure these are dark and that you have the edges of this highlighted. Like these should have some little tiny edge highlights on them to show they're catching light, stuff like that. Um, the, so I'm not asking you to take the contrast on the other elements up to the same level. You took this, this like blue steel, blue steel armor up to, um, but it definitely needs more contrast, it, especially because you've, you've drawn the armor in such striking colors that the other elements need to still exist right and they just fall away so the skin the cloth and the bone is really what jumped out at me as meeting needing more tonal variation and should really have some additional work put into it so there you go okay next up uh jacob uh so with uh some white scars um okay uh looking for battle damage and white armor so you know the white armor um it looks mostly fine again you need deeper shadows which means grays and stuff like that um look at like gareth nichols when he painted his white scars look at andy wardle's white scars video you see how they use grays in that right that's the key to painting white is you don't paint much white again this is a white shirt or this is you know has a lot of white in the shirt how much white's in that shirt not a lot when we think we paint white, we got to paint all white. That's not how white works, right? Like the bottom of the top of this drink, this is not white right here. This is like blue, black, gray, right? So the key is about 50% of the surface needs to be the color to read as the color. So watch those videos. Watch my painting smooth white video. You'll see how much gray and stuff like that I use in it. <laughs> now as to battle damage, the problem here is, again, go watch my battle damage video that I mentioned many times. Um, you know, we just have too many chips that are all to the same. Like, um, Darren, again, his battle damage video, you need, they have too many tiny little scratches with not enough that they're all uniformly the same. Like, it looks like these guys just got sprayed by gravel, right? So they need to have battle damage that looks purposeful, different size strikes, you know, very random. Like in the end here, let's go to, I'll, I'll show you exactly the guy who's the big offender. Hold on. Where's he at? Here we go. Okay, so like a lot of these are just the exact same size stuff. This is the best take on it because here you created something really nice and different. 
But again, there's no difference. Like the top has just as many scratches as the bottom, basically. That wouldn't be the case, right? His legs and stuff would be getting scraped up from being hit by rocks and things like that. And we'd have directional scratching from him walking. The top, if there are scratches, they're going to be from things like bullets or claws or somebody he's fighting with, right? So you're going to paint that kind of stuff into it. And again, they should be darker. They should have more of a, a deep brown black element to them. Uh, again, check out Darren's video. He'll send you in the right direction. So there you go. All right. Uh, six Eliminators for the Blood Ravens. Some feedback on them overall. Um, yeah, so uh, again, looked at these guys earlier. The answer is yes. First of all, these guys are way too far away. We got to, buddy, we got to zoom the camera in here. Are you going to crop on me? Like, this is not. Like I'm looking at the miniature from the other side of the room, and you're asking me what I think about it. It's too far away, but yes, I can I can see, especially in things like the furs and stuff like that. We or nets or whatever they're wearing. Yes, it's continue to push contrast. Um, avoid these things. <coughs> okay, like if you're going to use them because you're going for guys shooting in a swamp, fine. But if you're going to use them, then they need to be painted, which means you got to take washes and you got to run the washes down them. Unpainted elements of tufts. I've talked about this a million times. Make your fig look fake. So you need to have lots of different, you know, take a wash, work it in there, wash it down, and uh, and create that variation. You also want to dry brush the top of them some as well. That will give them the same level of contrast that everything else in the world seems to be painted with. So it'll make them feel like they actually fit in the world, not like this, where they, they feel completely out of scale, focus, and color with the lighting of the rest of the miniature. So there you go. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, Michael. Uh, first time posting. Uh, okay, so feedback on TMM Armor, uh, which you mostly did with the airbrush, applied inks over the metal color aluminum. Um, some models seem a little too busy or hard to read. Not sure how to improve with the green blade and shields working. They're too overwhelming. All right. So, no, the green blades are fine. They're like Necrons. That's how they look. They look crazy town, and I think they're fine. You may want to smooth some of the blending. Now, as to when armor looks flat, why is that happening? Well, it's because you're painting a color over aluminum only. If you're gonna paint a color over it, you have to pre-shade the metals, right? So you do aluminum, then you do silver from above, then you do black from below or something, then you put the color over, okay? That way you already have built-in contrast and it's gonna make it really pop. Now, as to the, I mean, to me, the green looks very striking. You've pushed it around the various points of the model. I honestly don't have a problem with it. Most of the time it's in their faces as well, which draws attention back there. Necron blades are always, uh, you know, attention stealing, but that's mostly on the big guys like the the lords or whatever. So that's fine. On the other dudes, it feels pretty fine. The lich guard, the shields and the weapons are a huge part of the mini. So yeah, works for me. So there's my feedback. I hope that helps. Cool looking stuff, by the way. I really dig how they came out. All right. Finally, Oliver, uh, Tau Firewear Squad, uh, full squad I've painted together. First time I've used my airbrush more than just Zenithal Prime. Use some of your yellow Imperial Fists and City Bases videos in painting these guys. Awesome. Yeah, so um, looking good. We need to keep pushing the contrast on both things like the bases. And, you know, go back and watch the painting video again I did. I didn't just make it gray stone. I do appreciate that you work the greens and browns in, though. I can see that. I see that, and I like that. So thank you. Um, but keep pushing that up there. You still need more high highlights. Like, really look at how much I push the contrast on those that stone and stuff like that. Now, on the yellow, we need to keep pushing the contrast. We need more of that rust color brought in there. Um, also, probably want to make sure that the panels are nice and struck out. Some of them look pretty clear. Some of them, not so much. So, like, if we look at this guy, some of these panels could be more well-defined. You also want to kind of avoid, like, this yellow is very bright and, like, sun yellow. You really want more of an ochre color or something like that worked in there. Like, it's just a little too cartoony of a yellow, especially when combined with two other very bright colors, the orange and the blue. My honest answer would be I would cut out one of those colors or something, um, probably the orange and turn it into more of a brown tone or something like that. Like we need to neutral something out. These guys feel cartoony because they're all hyper bright colors, right? And it's just kind of overwhelming to the senses. Um, but cool stuff. Hope that helps, Oliver. And uh, there you go. So with that, we come to the end of the month. So thank you to everybody who submitted fantastic work this month. Great stuff, everyone. Uh, really appreciate all of the uh, hard work and the guts it takes to put it in there. Remember, March's theme is armor, which is not armor like the armor you're wearing. Armor, the traditional meaning uh, of like tanks and aircraft and heavy machinery. Uh, so that is what we are doing this month. Uh, I'm going to go look at that right now to make sure no one got confused after I read the Iron Jaw stuff. 
uh, and thought people might be confused. But if you want to join us, remember the links down below. Love to have you. Thank you to everybody who submitted. Thank you to everybody who submits anything or who helps, who answers questions in the PMP. Remember, this is a positive community that's focused on growth as long as we all together want it to be. So please remember to, if you see something you like, stop, say, hey, I really like that. Give them a thumbs up, like the post, share that positivity because that's what keeps, keeps people growing, learning, hobbying, and taking the next step on their journey, just like we hope you do too. So with that, I will sign off and say thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate it. And as always, we'll see you next time.